In the last video, we tested three different proportional gains, captured the time response, and then calculated the characteristics of the time response for each of the three responses. Now, from these numbers, can we determine which of these cases is the best control? This is kind of a trick question. If all three measures, speed, stability, and accuracy, all improved or stayed constant with a particular change in control, then that change would be a good change. But as long as we stay with the same control algorithm, we can't improve all three measures at the same time. We can only gain a benefit in one by giving up something in one or two of the others. In this case, which control is the best depends upon our application. Let's use an example of our actual application, a pick and place manipulator. We'll be mounting the rack and pinion vertically and using it to lower an electromagnet to the board to pick up an object. So in our case, we really don't want there to be any overshoot at all. If there is any overshoot, the end effector will hit the board. So given that we want no overshoot, we then want to make the control as fast and accurate as possible. What we're describing as our goals for our control actually has a special name in control theory. It's called critical damping. A critically damped robot joint is one that moves to a position as quickly and accurately as possible, but with no overshoot. We can find the proportional gain for critical damping experimentally like this. We know that there is overshoot already when kp equals 1, so that means that the critical damping gain is somewhere between 0 and 1. Let's try a gain of 0 0.5. After we program the PSOC, we slide the slider all the way to the right, Hit the reset button on the PSOC, make sure the power supply is plugged in, and then we run our Python code. Open up the data file and copy and paste the numbers.
Let's take a look at the trend that we see here. When we tried a value of Kp that was smaller, our rise time became longer. In other words, the control became slower. Also, the steady state error became larger. In other words, we became less accurate. Now, also the overshoot became larger, but that's just kind of a fluke. As we continue in this control, we'll see that the overshoot will eventually start to go down as we make Kp smaller. So these numbers indicate to us that our gain for critical damping must be smaller than 0.5 because at 0.5 we still have overshoot. And remember that critical damping means that we have no overshoot. So let's try a value of Kp that's smaller than 0.5. Let's try 0.1. We change Kp to 0.1, then we program the PSOC. Slide the slider to the right. Reset the PSOC. Make sure the power supply is plugged in. Then go back to the Python code and run it. After the two motions finish, go and look at the data file. Copy all of these values, and now we'll paste them into Excel. I'm going to keep the Kp values in order here, so since 0.1 is less than 0.5, I'll put it in a column to the left of 0.5. Next, I'll add this plot to our set of time responses. For the time, I'll select all of the values up through one second. And then for the Y, I'll select all of the position values also just up through one second. For the series name, I will select Kp equals 1, and here we have our plot. Now I'm going to add a new row in, and I'll put point 0.1. Let's go find the rise time. In this case, there is no rise time because the value never reaches 1000. Also, there's no peak, so there's no peak time. We can find the settling time, though. And there's no overshoot. But there is quite a lot of steady state error. So point 0.1 is too small. There's no overshoot, but it's probably not the fastest or most accurate that it could be with no overshoot. The correct value is somewhere between point 0.1 and point 0.5. Let's try point 0.3. Program the PSOC. Slide the slider to the right. Reset the PSOC and then run the Python code. Now, as we test these future values, I'm not going to walk you through every step of finding each of the values in the step response. I'm just going to do it, and we'll take a look at the output. So I'll open up the data file, select all of the values, paste them into Excel, I'll add this one to our plot in the same way that we added the other ones. And in the interest of time, I'm going to start skipping some of the steps here. So here's our plot in green. 
and let's look at the values. Although we don't really have oscillations here, we do have overshoot. So that means that point 3 is still too large to be our critically damped value. We now know that point 1 is too small because there's no overshoot, and point 3 is too big. We could stop here and just choose point 1 as our value, but that wouldn't give us a very good control because we have so much steady state error. Let's try a value between point 1 and point 3. Let's try point 2. Program the PSOC. Slide the slider to the right. Reset the PSOC. And then run the Python code. Close the data file if it's still open, and then open it again. Copy all the values, and then paste them into Excel. Here I've added the plot in this dark blue color. Notice that it appears to have less overshoot than the plot in green. That's as expected, since the green plot represents a KP value of 0.3 and the dark blue represents a KP value of 0.2. We would expect the overshoot to decrease as KP becomes smaller. Next, let's look at the values. You'll see that we do have overshoot. That means that our critical damping value is less than 0.2. Let's try a value in between. How about 0.15? Program the PSOC. Slide the slider to the right. Reset the PSOC. And then run the Python code. Copy all of the values from the data file, paste them into Excel, I'll add this to the plot. You can see that this plot is continuing to become closer to the 1000 point. Let's see what the numbers show us. 0.15 is still too small. Again, we could stop here and just select 0.15, or we could try to get even closer. Let's see if we can get even closer. Let's try Copy the values from the data file, paste them in Excel, I'll add it to the plot. Now the plots are getting so close together we almost can't tell them apart by eye. We're getting really close to the best gain value here. Let's look at the numbers. Point one six has no overshoot. That means the value is somewhere between point one six and point two. Let's try point one seven.
let's look at these numbers. Point 0.17 does have some overshoot. That means that point 0.16 is our critically damped gain. Point 0.16 is the highest we can make KP before we start to have overshoot. So that's the gain that I'll choose for a proportional controller. Here's what the step response looks like for this gain. Notice that this response has no overshoot, it's pretty accurate, and it's as fast as we can make it without having the overshoot. Now, we learned previously that we cannot improve speed, stability, and accuracy all at once just by changing our gains. However, we might be able to do this by changing the control algorithm. In the next video, we'll look at a way we can change our control algorithm to implement the I and D components of PID control. And then we'll see whether we can improve this controller by using those additions to our control algorithm.